Welcome back. This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and this video continues where the previous video stopped. If you haven't watched the previous video, I suggest you watch it, and the link will be provided below. But what I did in the previous video was had four circuits, each with a different component in them, series and shunt, capacitors and inductors, all of which had magnitude of 50 ohms of reactance, and we saw the effect that those components had on a given load impedance, and that load impedance could be adjusted at will, and you can see the effect of each of these components. I'd like to continue on with another load generator block. And by the way, if your load generator block does not say clone gen and clone load, it's because you have either deliberately or inadvertently changed the settings here. It doesn't matter whether they're changed here or not, but this is the default you get when you bring a load generator block into the circuit, and you want both of these cloned. What we're doing is we're using one generator and one load, and we're duplicating the generator in each of these other four cases, and we're duplicating the load here in each of these other four cases. And now we'll add a piece of transmission line in here. Let's make the piece of transmission line lossless. It doesn't really have to be, but let's just make it lossless. And the first thing I notice here is it's green. It's green because SimSmith picks colors for all these things, and it doesn't know what, it, what I'm plotting. So let's pick a color that we're not using, say red. I'll right click here, color, and pick one of the red, red colors, I guess. Now all five of them are, are distinguishable. Let's also put a marker at the end of this uh, point and do it like we did before. We'll right click here, and it turns into a text marker, and let's type something like TL for transmission line. So now we have five different effects that we can see. Let's come up here and set this to be a step size. I right clicked on that this, this area. Step size, make it linear, say five degrees at a time so we can... Um, it's always nice in demos to show these things being nice even numbers. And we'll set the impedance of the transmission line again to be five ohm steps. It's, and let's look at this for a moment. If we change this impedance to be something like say 10 plus J0. Our transmission line is 45 degrees long in, ele in electrical length and that's a quarter of a rotation on the Smith chart. And I think people pretty much know that 90 degrees of rotation gets us halfway around and 180 degrees gets us the full way around. And the reason that we came up, came around exactly where we started was because the transmission line was lossless. Now, first thing we can do and notice is if we change the impedance of the transmission line, we start to see it looks like we're getting more, even though it's 45 degrees of electrical length, we're starting to see more than one quarter of a revolution. That's for, that's for impedances greater than 50. For impedances less than 50, we're starting to see less than a fourth of a revolution. So we need to explore that in a minute because I'm sure most people thought that, you would, that no matter what the transmission line impedance is, 45 degree length of transmission line would be a quarter of a revolution. So we'll explore that in a minute. But in the meantime, let's go back to where we were before. And let's look at the other possibilities for a transmission line. There are five possibilities. They're shown right here. We can also cycle through those by just right-clicking here and saying rotate, um, rotate. That will rotate through the choices. The first one I got appears to have disappeared. And it appears to have disappeared because it is a capacitance. And let's see what happens. It just happened to be exactly the same length down here as the series capacitor was. Well, it looks like a series capacitor. For short lengths, it looks like a small capacitance. This would be the trace for a small capacitance. A big effect for a small capacitance because small capacitance is a large capacitive reactance. As we increase this length of this transmission line, the capacitance gets larger. Larger capacitance has less effect on this circuit. We eventually get to 90 degrees where at 90 degrees, it, it, there has no effect at all because the open open here becomes a short up here, and if we continue on if we continue on beyond the 90 degrees, it becomes inductive, a series inductive circuit. So that's how that that piece of transmission line works. Rotate again. Now we get an open piece of transmission line that's that's in a shunt mode. Let's go back to 45 degrees, 
And what we see is this looks like with 50 ohm transmission lines, line, this looks like the same as this as the shunt C. For smaller values, smaller links of electrical links of the transmission line, this is a smaller capacitor. It has less effect on the load impedance all the way down to, to, to zero degrees, which has no effect. And eventually we get up here far enough at 90 degrees, go over here, it becomes inductive. Right click on this again, one more rotate. Now we have a shorted piece of transmission line in series. Well, a shorter piece of transmission line will look like an inductor for short lengths. So let's go down for short lengths. 10 degrees of electrical length, it looks like a small series inductor. And again, as we increase the length, we, we see the effect and eventually at 90 degrees it becomes capacitive. And that's exactly what we would expect. One more rotation, we have a shorted piece of transmission line that's across the across shorted transmission line that's across the circuit. That will look like a shunt inductor for large larger values of inductance for a shorter length of transmission line and smaller values of inductance. It has more of an effect because it's a smaller impedance across the across the circuit. Anyways, this is kind of fun to play around with. And it's kind of interesting. You can also see the effect of this transmission line is not 50 ohms. It still stays on the same line, but the value of the, tra of the transmission line, the value of the capacitance, or excuse me, in this case, the value of the inductance changes with the, with the impedance of the transmission line. Anyways, this is kind of interesting, and uh, let's look now more a little bit more at the transmission line itself. In order to examine more closely the electrical length of a transmission line versus the degrees of ro rotation we see on the Smith chart, I've created a circuit which is very similar to what we just previously did, a couple load generator blocks to have three individual circuits. We have a 200 ohm characteristic impedance transmission line, a 50 ohm, and a 12 and a half ohm. This is four times this impedance, this is four times this impedance, and they're all lossless transmission lines. I changed the frequency slightly to 10.24 megahertz so that 48 feet is exactly 180 degrees of revolution in terms of electrical delay. I've created a block which sets this transmission line and this transmission line to be the same length as this one so that if we change the length of the 50 ohm transmission line, we see the, the dot on all, on all the transmission lines that's moving around tells us the point we would get to with that length of transmission line. 45 degrees of electrical delay. And what we see is the 12 and a half ohm transmission line appears to have less than 45 degrees of electrical rotation. The 50 ohm one appears what we, to be what we'd normally expect, and the 200 ohm transmission line appears to have more than, 50, more than um, 45 degrees of rotation. So if we look at this more closely and plot something a little bit differently, let's plot, do this plot. Smith chart, we're gonna plot on a Smith chart dots instead of lines, and we're gonna plot at all the individual points for all three transmission lines, and that's these three plots right here. So if we plot on top of the, let's turn these, these ones off for a moment, and let's turn on the 50 ohm transmission line. We see nice linear spacing. Each individual dot represents an additional half, one half of a foot of transmission line length. Nice and linear. Just what we'd expect. That's what everybody's told you. I left the, there's a dot missing here because I stopped at 47 feet and this would be the 47.5 foot mark. So it doesn't look like we're like, you don't know where the starting point and the stopping point is. This is exactly a quarter of a rotation as we'd expect. Look at the 12 and a half ohm transmission line. Again, we're starting at five ohms. It starts at five ohms. These points are very, very close together. These are further apart. Look at the 200 ohm transmission line. These are very close together. These points over here are far apart. Let me get, turn these off for a moment. The spacing here is very large compared to these. This is exactly how things work. You can find plenty of examples on the internet where people don't d ignore this fact. They just say that the if you have a piece of printed Smith chart paper and it shows electrical delay on the outside here, which most of them do, they will say 
you know, this is a trend, this is electrical length and delay, or they'll say transmission line length. It only works if the transmission line is of the same impedance as the center point of the Smith chart. And we can show that again very quickly. Let's take the center of the Smith chart and make it be 12.5 ohms. Now, the 12 and a half ohm transmission line is nice and evenly spaced. The other two are not. We can set it to be 200 ohms. The 200 ohm transmission line is nice and evenly spaced. The other two are not. So I just thought this was, in, this was interesting. A lot of people are not aware of this fact. Uh, Sim Smith gets it right. There's no problem. Where, no matter where you have the center of the Smith chart, we can do one more thing real quickly here. If we look at this point, let's look at this point right here. On the 200 ohm, on the 200 ohm transmission line, get this out of the way so we can see it. Click on this point. The impedance is 9.92 plus J199. So remember that number. Let's go over here and change the impedance to be 200, 200 ohms for the center of the Smith chart. And we click on this, the point here again. Uh, this shows it's slightly different. It must not be exactly on it. Maybe it wasn't on it before. But it's basically 10 plus J200. It was one. It was 9.9 .9 plus 199 before. 10 plus 200 in this case. Let's go back to 50. Go find the point again. Zoom in on it so I can get a more accurate. 10 plus J200. It's the same point when I change the impedance. Nothing changes. It's just the view on the, on the Smith chart changes. Thought that's interesting. I hope others find it interesting too. Anyways, thank you very much.